Hello music fans, May is over now, so it's time to talk about my top 10 favorite albums in metal, rock, and prog that came out in May 2024, starting with number 10, which is Age of Distraction and A Game of Whispers. This is progressive metal, a little bit of alternative rock influence in there. My favorite track on here is the title track. This is the debut album by Age of Distraction. They're a band from the UK. It's great to hear another solid prog metal debut album this year. There's already been so many great ones. Um, the Point of No Return is another great track. It's a wild instrumental song. I love the intro riff, uh, seven beats per bar, and the rhythm and pattern is constant, but the notes keep changing slightly to imply some different chords. And they aren't your typical chords. Fans of classic prog metal bands like Queen's Reich, Fate's Warning, and Dream Theater should like this band because it's all clean vocals in that traditional heavy metal and sometimes almost power metal style. It's got a lot of great fast guitar parts and solos. If this sounds good to you, check out Age of Distraction and A Game of Whispers. Number nine is Wheel and Charismatic Leaders. This is progressive metal. And my favorite track is Disciple. This is uh, the third album by this Finnish band, and I'd never listened to an album by Wheel until this one, uh, but the single I heard sounded great. That caught me to check this out. Fans of Tool, Carnival, and Tesseract should like this. It sounds kind of like Tool, but with a little more of a gent vibe to it. It's all clean vocals here, though, and they sound really good and catchy. The clean vocals here are almost as catchy as Linkin Park choruses. So check it out if that sounds appealing to you. If you like Tool meets Gent meets Linkin Park, check out Wheel and Charismatic Leaders. Number eight is Prehistoric Animals and Finding Love in Strange Places. This is progressive rock. It's got some alternative and some metal influences in there. Check out the song The City of My Dreams as a preview. And this is the fourth album by this Swedish band. It's very catchy and accessible, progressive rock music. has some hints of metal, but it never goes full-blown metal, so I'm calling it more on the progressive rock side. I think Prehistoric Animals will appeal to fans who like the poppier and more accessible tracks by prog metal bands like Tool and Dream Theater, because it essentially sounds like turning down the metal in those bands and turning up the pop. The songwriting here from Prehistoric Animals is great. So if that sounds good to you, check out Prehistoric Animals and Finding Love in Strange Places. Next up at number seven, I have Doth and their album The Deceivers. This is progressive, melodic, technical death metal with groove metal, symphonic, and industrial influences. My favorite track, I think, has to be Purified by Vengeance, which features Mark Holcomb of Periphery and Mick Gordon. This is the fifth album by this American band, their first new album since they're self-titled in 2010, so they took a long break from making new music. I surprisingly never heard a full album by Doth before, but I heard the single for this album called Hex Unending. It sounded cool, so I listened to the full album. There are some nice symphonic elements on that song that follow the crushing, groovy death metal riffs. There's also some great guest guitar players on a lot of these tracks on this album, like Mark Holcomb of Periphery, Dean Lamb of Archspire, Per Nilsson of Scar Symmetry, Jeff Loomis, and more. When they get their guest guitar solos, they shred like mad. All the vocals on this album are harsh, and the music is intense but symphonic, cinematic, groovy, technical, and progressive all at the same time. I think fans of A Legion, Flesh God Apocalypse, The Faceless, and Archspire will like this because they remind me a bit of them. I'm excited to dive into their past albums now that I've heard this. My favorite track at the moment is Purified by Vengeance, featuring Mark Holcomb and Mick Gordon. If that sounds good to you. Check out Doth and their album The Deceivers. Number six is Sycophant and their self-titled debut album, Sycophant. This is progressive rock with jazz fusion, pop, funk, and surf influences. Check out the song Between Air and Water as a preview. This is the debut album by this Norwegian band. Check out the full review video for this album that I did on my channel to get my full thoughts. It is truly an excellent album. 
Looks like a fan released four singles from the album ahead of time. They're all great to start with to get a feel for the band. In particular, Between Air and Water and Monuments of Old are great to introduce you to their style. If you're a fan of Rush, Led Zeppelin, Mastodon, Baroness, I think you'll like this. It sounds like a mix of those bands to me. The intro of Monuments of Old reminds me of Rush. In general, a lot of the bass playing in the band reminds me of Getty Lee, which is great because Getty Lee is one of my favorite bassists of all time. The drums sound like Led Zeppelin. The vocals are lower and raspier, so they remind me more of Baroness. The guitars sound a bit like Rush at times, but a bit like Mastodon at other times, and sometimes they have a reggae, surf, or spaghetti western thing going on. My favorite track is Between Air and Water. Uh, so check that out. That's Sycophant and their self-titled album. Number five is Capstan and their album The Mosaic. This is melodic post-hardcore, kind of progressive post-hardcore. It's got pop punk and emo influences in here. Check out the song Misery Scene for a preview. This is the third album by this American band. I love everything Capstan has done. This is no exception. If you're a fan of Hail the Sun, Idola, Dance Gavin Dance, I think you'll like this. It's that similar progressive, fast guitar, post-hardcore style with the emo pop punk influences. It's a really fun listen because there's a lot of variety and there's lots of little surprises, like there's a saxophone on the song What You Want. Number four is Terra Maze and their album Eli, A Wonderful, a Wonderful Fall from Grace. This is progressive metal. Check out the song Step Right Up for a preview. This is the 11th album by this Australian band. I really enjoy all of Terra Maze's albums that I've heard, and I'm working my way through their back catalog. I haven't heard them all yet, but they're a very melodic progressive metal band. They occasionally have Christian themes in their lyrics, but they aren't too overt or blatant about it. So they haven't bothered me too much with their lyrics. The vocal and instrumental performances from Terra Maze are just amazing. This album continues their streak of excellent releases. It's helping propel them towards becoming one of my favorite bands. I expect this will place well in my year-end top 50 albums of the year list. The last track, A Wonderful Fall From Grace, is a prog epic that's 14 and a half minutes long. Another excellent track on the album. At number three, I have Intervals with their album Memory Palace. This is instrumental progressive metal with progressive rock, gent, and jazz fusion influences. Check out the song Mnemonic for a preview of this. This is the fifth album by this Canadian band and another band where I love everything that Intervals has done. I expected this to be excellent and make my year in top 50, and I'm sure it will. I'm not usually as into instrumental music, but I make an exception for Intervals. They're probably my second favorite instrumental band after Animals as Leaders. Check this out. If you like instrumental progressive metal like Animals as Leaders, Polyphia, I think you'll love this. The rhythms here are groovy. A lot of them have that gent style of syncopated rhythms over top of 4-4 four, four beats. There's a lot of great melodic lead guitar playing here that is both impressive and catchy at the same time. If that sounds good to you. Check out Intervals and their album Memory Palace. Number two, I have Red-Handed Denial with A Journey Through Virtual Dystopia. This is progressive metalcore. A bit of gent influences, a bit of post-hardcore influence here, some pop as well. Uh, it's hard to pick a favorite song because they're all so different. Uh, maybe check out One More Night as a preview to get the beautiful power of Lauren Babick's voice. This is the fourth album by this Canadian band. I love everything Red Handed Denial has done. This is no exception. Lauren Babick on vocals here is great. She's one of the most powerful female vocalist in metal today. She can sing like an angel, scream like a demon. And the first single that they released from the album Parasite is the opening track on the album. It's just intense, heavy, hardcore, genty metalcore. It's got dissonant panic chords on the guitar, intense screen vocals, but it also has some great clean vocal hooks. The second single is One More Night. It has an amazing clean vocal performance, perhaps Lauren's best on the album, that would rival the best pop and American Idol style singers. But to me, she sounds even better than those types of singers because she has that grit, that rasp, and that power, even when singing in her clean vocal style rather than screaming. 
However, One More Night doesn't really capture and display the full power of the band as they hold back a little more as it's more of a straightforward pop style track to let the vocals shine. But the album continues to bounce back and forth between some songs and parts that sound like pop, some that are really hardcore, genty, metalcore, and some that mix both extremes. There are even some parts and some songs that are more electronic with some industrial vibes. My favorite guitar playing on this album is uh, the riffing on Eat Glass, which is a very fast and angry track. And I love how they follow up that fast, angry track with a soft acoustic ballad song called I Hope You're Happy. I love how every song on this album is distinct. It has its own identity, which makes it hard to pick a favorite. If you're a fan of bands like Spirit Box, Protest the Hero, Tesseract, Paramorse, Sleep Token, and uh, any of metalcore bands that have a bit of progressive and gen edge to them, uh, I think you'll like this. It sounds like a mix of all those bands I mentioned. Check out Red Handed Denial, A Journey Through Virtual Dystopia. And my number one album of May 2024 is Azure with their album FIM, spelled F-Y-M. This is progressive metal, kind of not too metal, maybe almost progressive rock, but they do have that power metal influence as well as some art rock, classical, jazz, and pop rock influences here. Um, a song that I would recommend you check out for a preview is called The Asdenist slash Den of Dawns. This is the third album by this band from the UK. I never listened to an album by Azure before, but the early release single I heard sounded great. I became interested in hearing uh, the whole album. And upon first listen, I was immediately hooked. I think fans of Hemina, Native Construct, and The Kindred will like this band as they reminded me of them with their quirky but powerful clean vocals delivered with technical perfection and character. They also have the odd harsh vocal here and there on the album for contrast. I think the vocals will be the make or break feature here for people if you can get into them. They might be a bit of a, an acquired taste for most people even though I like them right away because I like some of the quirkier vocal styles. Um, but that might be the sticking point for some people. But if you just listen to the music, get into that part first, the vocals, I think you'll acquire the taste for them and you'll get really into this. I immediately went back and checked out the other albums by Azure based on this because I love this so much. Um, their first two albums are also near masterpieces. And in fact, uh, all the albums on my list today are my excellent tier, but this is the one that has made my near masterpiece tier. Uh, this new album, Fim, features a nearly 17-minute prog epic track as the second last track on the album called Trench of Nalu which is one of the best prog epics of the year so far, if not the absolute best. It's probably my favorite at the moment. And that's it for my top 10 albums of May 2024. What do you think of the albums on this list? And let me know what your 10 favorite albums are of May 2024 down the comments, or just your one or two or three, whatever you're digging. Let me know. I want to hear if I missed anything great. And stay tuned for next time. Peace out.